Everybody, it's Tyler here on the Speedway Signature Band, checking in with 338A Iterated, uh, who had a great season so far, finalists at Cornerstone event just a couple weeks ago, as well as Think Award and also Second Skills uh, at their competition as well, too. We're going to be talking all about the robot as we go through here. Uh, of course, the full uh, design of it, going through uh, things like they have a really cool blocker they added on, so make sure you pay attention to that. Great catapult, and overall, just a great machine. Let's learn more about them coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Madden, let's start talking about the uh, wings on your robot. So talking about the overall design for it, anything cool that stands out with it. And then uh, we got to talk about your ramp after that too. All right. So these are our wings. They are on the side of the robot. And as you can see, they're kind of elevated off the ground. And this is to help us during our autonomous sec er, part of the match. This is the first 15 seconds of the match and you have to de-score tri balls out of the match load zone. And this allows us to go over the barrier and de-score them pretty quickly. This allows us also to not have a stick on our robot. Whereas we used to have a stick on our robot, now we can reduce weight and we just have our um, wings on our robot and as you can see also we don't have any ramps on our wings our ramps are actually on the inside of our drive pods and most teams will have the ramps on the outside and the disadvantage to this is that they can't go over the barrier when their ramps are open so they have to close their ramp or their wings and our ramps are made out of flywheel weights and just cnc machined out to make our ramps. They're on the front and back side. And when we were talking earlier, you said you changed your ramps out to this uh, CNC. What made you discover that this was a good material for you to go with? Um, because our plastic ones kept breaking and deforming like over time, and these haven't deformed or like broke at all. The metal on the robot will break before these will break because this is aluminum compared to steel. Timmy, lots to talk about on the inside here, starting uh, with the uh, intake, but let's kind of go all the way through uh, intake into your shooter, and then, you, uh, like you said, you got a really cool blocker you've added on to. Love to hear more about that as well. All right, so let's start with the intake. It's really simple. It's just a one-motor intake, and you can easily intake, push that in a little more, man. Intake, and then easily outtake it right into the goal. We also have these plastic ramps, which allow it to easily elevate up over the, the goal when pushing them in. We also found this rubber band net is really helpful when holding possession of the tri-ball. Um, we also have a piston that just holds this up so that we can start inside the 18. Next really cool part is the shooter mech, and this is just a really simple kicker mech. We actually used to have a kata, but we found that intake to kata wasn't as useful. The only portion where it was a little bit useful was an auton, and we found that just outtaking over the barrier or outtaking through the uh, port outlet is more, much more efficient. And so I'll show you the kicker real quick. It just simply fires like that and it'll always stop in the down position, so I have a button that just toggles it. And match loaders, all they have to do is place this tri-ball here, and we have a slightly upward angle, and there are these rubber stops that basically keep it from sliding down, and like that, so it's really easy for them to match load and to get a consistent. How many shots are you doing, how, or how quickly? So we can do 44 shots in about 27 seconds, so that means that leaves me a lot of time as a driver in skills to do more pushes, et cetera. Um, for the shooting, is it just you're just holding about, down a button and it's just going automatic sort of thing? So it's actually a toggle button. If we click this button, it starts firing, and when I click it again, it'll automatically pull it down to the down position, so gotcha. that makes going under the barrier As a, as, as a driver, what made you choose doing a toggle versus like a hold down? It's just a personal preference, and yeah. for example, if one of my teammates isn't here with a toggle, I can start the toggle, and then I can match load myself. For example, if there's only two of us that can make it to a comp, I can match load myself and then go back to the controller instead of having to hold it down. Very cool. Let's got we got to talk about your blocker on here yes. too. Let's let's deploy that. And I want to see what goes so into that. The and the, the overhang is really cool. Right. So our blocker is actually deployed using two single acting pistons, one on each side. And the reason we went with single acting is so that it can contract passively, which gives us more air to use in things like the wings. And um, before we used to have a passive blocker that was off of the intake, and it was relatively effective, but only against robots with stationary shooters. Any robot with an elevated shooter could easily get over it. Sure. And um, so we switched to this active blocker with pneumatics and with this overhang so that we could block elevated shooters and so we could block robots with high arc. 
And the way we block hierarch is with this elevated portion that actually comes up with this string. So when the robot, when the blocker is down, you can see that that string is slack. But when the blocker goes up, as the this part doesn't move, the string becomes taunt and actually pulls that up. And a lot of teams you'll notice actually use plastic or grip mat, but we went with string just as it's a lighter alternative and it just leaves it a little more open. How has it been working out for you so far here at Speedway? Blocker has been pretty useful. We've used it in a couple of matches today. It hasn't been a huge game changer here, but at Cornerstone it was really big for us and it actually helped us win a couple of matches. Let's start to wrap up on this robot, talk about your uh, climber uh, that you have or your hang that you do Madden, so talk to me about uh, what it is and uh, something I love to ask teams are as this meta starts to evolve, are you looking at making any changes for future events too? Um, so our hang, we have two th different types of hang on our robot and this allows for if our alliance is also hanging on A tier we can hang an A tier hang too and so that we get 40 points instead of 35 and then we also have a B tier hang which Timmy will show so it is able to hang at B tier and so we can hang um, if our alliance isn't hanging we can hang at B tier and so we can just have the highest amount of points um, this also allows for, I, didn't, I don't think we plan on changing it, sure. because as you can see there's only I think one or two teams here that have a higher hang, and the odds in an 80 person team tournament of being with that team is pretty low, and we haven't seen them yet today in any of our matches. Well, iterated once again, 338A. Thank you so much for taking time to tell us more about your machine. Congrats on a great season so far. I know you're looking for big things here at Speedway, and uh, many more challenges come ahead, so we can't wait to see how you do. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.